Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about how to set up generic firewall rules on a SonicWall device. This video is going to assume that you already have a SonicWall uh, basically set up and ready to go. We're only going to configure some firewall rules here and kind of just go over how they work and the flow of objects, address objects, address groups, and all of that. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, this is just going to be an overview of how the rules themselves are built. Um, if you are pretty familiar with that, then you can go ahead and skip this section. But basically, if you are new to a sonic wall, you've got a few different uh, terms to know in order to build out what you need for firewall rules, as well as many other rules in the sonic wall itself. These objects will apply to anything like VPN connections, content filtering, the firewall rules themselves, yada yada. Pretty much everything in a sonic wall is going to be based around these groups. And those are address objects, address groups, and zones. And the basic flow of this will be an address object, which could be an IP address, a network, a IP range, etc. And it will be defined a zone. And your zone is being like LAN, WAN, voice, guest, etc. Pretty much everything the sonic wall does is going to be based around zones especially when it comes to firewall rules. So whatever configuration you are putting into the address object needs to have a zone defined on where that IP or whatever actually lives. So that way it'll be classified correctly when we actually define our firewall rules. Now these address objects are just an individual IP or network or range. If we want to define multiple and group them together, all we do is throw them into the address group, which is just a collection of address objects. Pretty self-explanatory. And this is very useful when we make our firewall rules or VPN policies because we can update these groups on the fly. So when we go to create our uh, firewall rule, for example, we'll have our from zone and our to zone. So say we want to go from our land zone to our guest zone. We'll be defining our source address object or group and also our destination. Now for this example, we'll just say the destination is any on the guest network, but our source we'll say is an address group that we'll name group A, for example. Now this address group, for example, will contain three address objects. We'll see IP A, IP B, and IP C. And if at any time we want to allow a different IP from our LAN zone to our guest zone, we don't have to create another rule or anything like that. All we have to do is just go into our address group and add another address object. And then that will allow, say, IP D to this exact same firewall rule. So this is really the general setup of anything you do in the sonic wall. It's gonna revolve around your address objects, which are the individual IPs or whatever, and then they're grouped into address groups, which can be applied to any rule that you create, be that a firewall rule, a content filtering rule, a VPN policy, etc. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop right into the sonic wall and take a look at how we actually configure this. So we'll go ahead and log back into our sonic wall. And if you're curious, this video actually directly follows the first time setup video. So all we have configured here are the interfaces and DHCP and whatnot. It's a very basic setup here, but let's start with a very simple uh, firewall rule that you'll probably want to create if you're doing WAN management. So we have, or at least we should have, if we go into our interface X1 WAN, uh, we're going to turn on HTTPS management, but we don't want just anybody to be able to hit this login page and try to log into our sonic wall. We want to lock this down to maybe our business address or our home address or wherever we're going to be managing this device from. So what do we need to do? We need to create an address object for these destinations that we want to allow. So let's go to object here at the top and addresses. And then these are all of our address objects. Right now we have none. And if we hit address groups, these are all of our groups, which there are quite a few default address groups. Most of them revolve around, say, specific interfaces, like specifically one that could be useful is this WAN interface IP group. This automatically has a list of every 
IP address that is configured on a WAN interface. So we can actually use that default group in this firewall rule we're about to make. And I just went back to the address objects page and there's actually quite a few default address objects as well, which I kind of figured should have been there. Didn't know why they weren't in the first place, but anyways, these are like the individual IPs. So like our X2 interface IP, that's its own object. Our X2 subnet, that is its own object. The X4 default gateway, yada, yada. You can kind of see all of these are a single either network or IP or route or range or whatever. So let's create one, go up here to add in the top right, and we're gonna name this um, office. And we're going to assign this to a zone. So every object has to be assigned a zone. And this office IP is gonna be the public IP from where I want to manage this device from. So we're gonna select WAN, because obviously this is gonna be coming in over the WAN interface, so its zone will be on the WAN. And we can either select host, range, network, fully qualified domain name, or a MAC address. Now for this, we'll just do host, pretend that I went to what is my IP.com or IP chicken or whatever, and I got my public IP, and then I put it in here. We'll say 40.40.40.1, and that is completely pulled out of thin air as a public IP for where we want to manage this from. So we'll save that. Now we have the address object office, and it's going to keep this box open so we can create more if we want to. So I'll go ahead and create another one called like home public IP and that office one probably should have been a little more descriptive but whatever and we'll just change this to 41.1 and save that so now we've created two new objects for our home and our office public IPs so let's go ahead and exit out of that if we want to view them we can change the view from all to just custom objects and these are only the objects that we have created ourselves not any of the default ones that came with the device and if we want to throw these both into a group we just go over to address groups, add, give it a name. We'll do management, public IPs. And then we just search through here for the address objects we created. So office, hit the arrow, move that into the group, home public IP, highlight that, move it into the group and click save. So now we have our group set up for both of the public IPs we need. So now we can actually create our firewall rule. So to do that, let's go to policy, rules and policies, access rules. And you can see we have all of our default rules already in here, land to land, land to WAN, whatever. But you will also notice that all of these have a source zone, destination zone, source address, destination address, and a destination port. But you'll also notice that none of these have just a straight IP address defined on here. They are all names. And those names are either address objects or address groups. So like here, all X0 management IP, that's a group. And then HTTP management, that is actually a service object, but that contains a single TCP port of 81. So let's go ahead and make our own rule here. Uh, we'll click add, which is actually at the bottom of this page. And we'll go ahead and name this uh, public management. Yep, we want to allow it. It's going to be an IPv4 type, and we'll just keep priority as auto prioritize. Uh, that is default. You can manually set your firewall priority, be that top, bottom, anywhere in between. Um, auto priority works pretty good 90% um, of the time, so we'll keep it there. And then we're going to select our zone or interface, which our zone is going to be WAN, because we want to allow addresses coming from the WAN into our sonic wall as a destination also of WAN. So this is a WAN to WAN rule because it's coming from our public IPs, which are out there on the WAN somewhere, coming to our WAN interface for management. Now our source address is gonna be that group that we just made, which is right here, home public IP. Now the ports and services, we could um, lock this down a little further by selecting a what's called a service group, which all of these service groups and service objects, they function the exact same way as the address groups and address objects. The only difference is they're defining ports instead of IP addresses and networks. But for this one, at least for the source, we're going to leave that as any. And on the destination, we'll go ahead and configure this side for an address of that default group that we found, which is uh, WAN interface IPs. And for the destination, we can actually lock this down to say HTTPS management, which is a service group 
which includes port 443 or 444, which is what we're actually managing the Sonic Wall with. So this will lock down our rule even more to only the service that we want to allow to it. And this is either a group or an object. Um, you can't, uh, sometimes it's it's a little hard to tell. This drop down is actually broken up into groups and objects, but sometimes it's a little hard to tell with just the name, whether or not it's an actual object or a group. But anyways, that doesn't really matter. We can now move on to really just add the rule or we can look through these other menus. Um, we can exclude or include different users, I'm not worried about any of that. We can modify the timeout times and we can even go further with security profiles or traffic shaping, logging and all of that. Uh, nine times out of 10, I'm not worried about anything in these other menus. I'm only worried about the main firewall rule itself. So we're gonna go ahead and add this. And if we want to see that, there's a few different ways we can filter our firewall rules. We can either do the same thing we did with our address objects, which is go up here to default and custom and change that to custom rules only. This shows only our custom rule that we just made. And as you can see, going from WAN to WAN, source address, our home public IPs, which actually that is a mistake. I don't know how I didn't catch that. Whoops. Two WAN interface IPs. And here you can see it lists uh, three WAN interfaces because those are the ones defined as WAN. None of them have an IP right now. And the service is HTTPS management, TCP 444. Now let's go back in there and edit this rule because I don't know how I ended up on home public IP, which is just a single address object. We're really looking for uh, management public IPs, which was the group that we made, which includes both address objects. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now if we hover over the source address, you can see we've got the two objects in here. One is office, two is home public IP. So that is how we create a basic firewall rule. Now we can also filter these uh, between whatever zones we want to look at. So if we want to see all WAN to WAN rules, we just find WAN on the left side, match that up with WAN on the top, and that'll show us all of our WAN to WAN rules. Uh, we, gotta, we have to change that back to default and custom if we want to see the others, but now we're only viewing the rules that we want to see. So that is really all there is to making custom firewall rules in the Sonic Wall. Uh, we can go ahead and go through another example, I guess. So we'll say we want to control some uh, traffic between LAN and guest. So let's find LAN on the side here, match that up with guest and see what we have. Well, we're already allowing everything. So let's just say, for example, we actually wanna go the opposite direction. So guest to LAN, let's change this matrix thing. And we have our one guest to LAN rule, which is block everything. And that is because of the different um, security types that we configured on these zones when we set them up in our first time setup video. But let's say we want to allow just a single guest PC to say our LAN server for DNS or something, whatever. Let's go ahead, go back to the objects. We'll create the address object for that guest PC. We'll just name this guest PC one. We're going to assign it to the guest zone and we'll say it's, it's a host. So 192.168. Um, I actually forget the IP of guest. I think it's 41. Dot, we'll say 50. Go ahead and save that. And then we will create another address object for our main server, which is going to be in the LAN zone. And we'll say that's 192.168.40.150. Go ahead and save that. Now, since this is only gonna be a one-to-one -one rule, we really don't need to assign it into a group unless we just really wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to ignore that part. So if we go back to policy and actually build this rule, what we can do is if we stay in this view where we have only guests to LAN uh, selected, if we go to add, then that's going to auto populate here into the source and the destination. So if you're looking at all of your rules and they're not filtered in any way, then these will just be like any and you have to select it. But if you already have your view narrowed down, then when you go to create a rule, it automatically throws in the zones um, that you have on that filter. So we'll name this guest one, two main server. That's going to be allow. And we're going to select our guest address object, which is guest PC one port services. We'll leave as any, and we'll say that the destination is going to be main server. And we'll also just say that we only want DNS to uh, be allowed here. So we'll select DNS name service. We can narrow that down even further to TCP or UDP itself. But if we select 
DNS name service itself and click add, then we can see that that is actually a service group that includes both TCP and UDP port 53. So now we have our guest to LAN rule, which will allow just this one PC to access our main server for only DNS related traffic. Now let's say we wanted the entire guest network to be able to access this. All we gotta do is go in here, edit the rule, change that from guest PC one to the entire subnet that guest is on, which that's on interface X2. So right here, this is a default address group or object and that is X2 subnet. This would allow everything in the X2 subnet, which is our guest interface, to access the main server using DNS. So if we go ahead and save that, mouse over that rule, you can see 192.168.41.0 is now the source. Anything on that subnet can access this destination. So hopefully I haven't uh, beaten this horse too dead um, at this point, but that is how you create firewall rules on a sonic wall. I actually really like the way that it does this, using the address objects and address groups and all of that. Um, personally, I think it's a lot simpler than a lot of the other firewalls, but a lot of that also comes down to personal preference and just how much experience you have with certain vendors. So anyways, not gonna ramble on too much longer. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But as always, happy networking.